Percy Shelley, 1792-1822, wrote a considerable amount of poetry in his short life, as well as penning pamphlets such as The Necessity of Atheism, which got him expelled from Oxford, and A Defense of Poetry, which contains his famous declaration that poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world. Ozymandias. Published in the Examiner on January 11, 1818, Ozymandias is perhaps Percy Bysshe Shelley's most celebrated and best-known poem. A sonnet about the remnants of a statue standing alone in a desert, a desert which was once the vast civilization of Ozymandias, King of Kings the poem is a haunting meditation on the fall of civilizations and the futility of all human endeavor. Shelley wrote the poem as part of a competition with his friend, Horace Smith. Music, When Soft Voices Die This short poem, often simply titled to, Come is one of Shelley's best-known poems thanks to its opening two lines, music, when soft voices die, vibrates in the memory. The poem was written in 1821, just one year before Shelley drowned, and first published in Posthumous Poems of Percy Bysshe Shelley in 1824 with a preface by Shelley's widow, the Frankenstein author Mary Shelley. Stanzas written in dejection, near Naples. This is one of Shelley's finest poems, and, in many ways, one of his most emblematic romantic poems, given its depiction of individual feeling against the backdrop of the natural world, here, the shores of the sea at the Bay of Naples. In his dejected or miserable state, Shelley reviews his life, muses about death, and thinks about what sort of poetic reputation he has carved out for himself. Mont Blanc. The Romantics were greatly interested in a quality that Edmund Burke called the sublime, that peculiar mixture of awe and terror we feel when confronted with great forces of nature. Percy Shelley's poem about Mont Blanc, the highest mountain in the Alps, is a classic example of romantic poetry about the sublime, an ode to nature as a powerful and beautiful force. Shelley composed Mont Blanc during the summer of 1816, and it was first published in Mary Shelley's History of the Six Weeks. To a Skylark Shelley completed this, one of his most famous poems, in June 1820. The inspiration for the poem was an evening walk Shelley took with his wife, Mary, in Livorno, in northwest Italy. Mary later described the circumstances that gave rise to the poem. It was on a beautiful summer evening while wandering among the lanes, whose myrtle hedges were the bowers of the fireflies, that we heard the caroling of the skylark. The opening line of the poem gave Noel Coward the title for his play Blythe Spirit. The Flower That Smiles Today Sometimes titled Mutability, though Shelley, confusingly, wrote another poem called Mutability. This is one of Shelley's most widely anthologized poems and a classic example of the Carpe Diem or Seize the Day poem. Ode to the West Wind Written in 1819 during a turbulent time in English history, the Peterloo Massacre, which Shelley also wrote about in his poem The Mask of Anarchy, deeply affected the poet. This classic ode is one of Shelley's best-known poems. The West Wind is the wind that would carry Shelley back from Florence, where he was living at the time, to England, where he wanted to help fight for reform and revolution. The West Wind thus becomes, before Harold Macmillan, a wind of change. To the Moon We think this little poem is a homage to, or recasting of, a sonnet by the Elizabethan poet Sir Philip Sidney, 1554-86, who wrote a famous poem addressed to the moon. In Sidney's sonnet sequence Astrophil and Stella, Sidney's alter ego asks the moon if it has such a pale appearance because it is sick with unrequited love. It takes the form of a fragment, in which Shelley addresses or apostrophizes the moon and asks why it is so pale, much as Sidney does in his poem. Adonais. Shelley wrote this poem in 1821 as an elegy on the death of his friend and fellow romantic poet, John Keats who had died in Rome of tuberculosis, aged just 25. The poem is a pastoral elegy in the vein of John Milton's Lycidas, and uses the nine-line stanza form known as the Spenserian stanza, borrowed from Edmund Spencer's The Fairy Queen. Just over a year later, Shelley himself would be dead, when he drowned, he had a volume of Keats's poems with him.